Hi, I'm Ollie, and I'm one of the sound engineers here at CDV and Hopper Tosser. So the model of turntables we use here at the club are the Technics 1200 M5Gs. So we use this model because of the ultra pitch feature. This not only allows you to do the normal plus or minus eight that normal Technics give you, but it also has plus or minus 16. So a lot of DJs are digging tunes that uh, might not have BPMs that are what you could consider danceable, specifically in this club. So for example, a DJ might bring a hip hop tune that has an instrumental on it, but the BPM is at 100 BPM. Alternatively, a DJ might bring a trance record uh, that's at 150 to 160 BPM, which isn't really playable here. So having the ultra pitch allows these DJs to play the tunes at 120 to 130 BPM. The, the full booth is set up at the start of the weekend, and that'll be done by one of our engineers. They'll set up the mixer, the turntables, and the CDJs. Another engineer will come in an hour or so before the event starts and just check everything in the booth is in working order. So there are two forms of isolation that you need to be conscious of when setting up turntables. The first is structural isolation. Basically, the sound waves that travel through this physical medium can cause vibrations, and that can cause feedback on the turntable. The other type of isolation is airborne isolation, and that typically comes from sound waves in the air from the sound system. To avoid this, one thing to consider is speaker placement and turntable placement. For example, if you had your turntable set up with a speaker right next to it, Obviously the sound waves from the speaker are gonna cause some problems. So in terms of structural isolation here in the club, we place two concrete slabs underneath each deck. We also use these uh, Luke ABS-1 absorbers. Um, these basically just help to absorb all the vibrations that the uh, concrete slabs don't. Every space is unique, specifically this one being a boat. Obviously that presents unique problems, which we all have to overcome. Uh, and we do our best as a team to overcome these problems. The main problem that we've had to overcome and we're still kind of battling with is the needle skipping. We use our own in-house needles. Um, the needles that we eventually landed on were the Autophon Cubits. We chose the cubits because they're quite loud compared to the other needles that Autophon have. This way it's easier to match quieter vinyls with digital stuff from the CDJs. So I'm just gonna talk you through how either I or one of the other sound engineers here would set up the decks for each party. So the first thing to do is to make sure that the turntable is positioned correctly on the concrete slab. We like to position them right in the middle of the slab. And the second thing to do is just to make sure that uh, the turntable is properly isolated, as in there's nothing touching it. The next thing to do is to check the turntable is level. If the turntable isn't level, it could cause tracking issues and the sound quality could be worse. The best thing to do that is to just grab a little level. I use this one here from Autophon, it's about 10 quid. Yeah, and just throw that onto the deck. It's level. If it's not level, just check that there's nothing underneath the turntable or on the surface that the turntable is on. The next thing to check is the tone arm height. The tone arm height can be adjusted here with this big dial at the base of the tone arm. To check the tone arm height, you need to take a record, there's one I prepared earlier, and put the needle onto the record. Then go down to the level of the tone arm and check that it's level. If the tone arm height is too high, then the tone arm will be angled down. Obviously this will have an impact on how the needle sits in the grooves. When the tone arm height is set correctly, the needle will sit perpendicular to the record in the groove, and that's what you want. If it's not level, rotate the base of the tone arm to the point where it looks level to your eye. And then it's always good to just double check with a ruler by putting the ruler at the base or as close to the base of the turn arm as possible. And then at the point where the cartridge is attached to the turn arm. If you check with the ruler and it's out by, you know, less than a millimeter, don't worry. Vinyl, it comes in different thicknesses. If it's out by, you know, half a millimeter, a quarter of a millimeter, it's fine. Right. The 
next thing to do is to balance the tone arm. To balance the tone arm, make sure there's no record on the platter. Turn the counterweight all the way to the back so that the tone arm is floating in the air like that. Then slowly bring the counterweight forward until the tone arm is balanced in the air. This can be quite tricky and sometimes takes a bit of time. Once you get to the point, it will look like the tone arm is floating. Once you get to this point, put the tone arm back into the armrest and clip it. Then holding the back of the counterweight, rotate the dial with the numbers on to the point where zero and the line on top of the tone arm line up. Now the tone arm is balanced. Next, you want to add the weight onto the tone arm. This will depend on the specifications of the needle and the cartridge that you're using. For the systems that we're using here, Autophon recommend using a tracking force of three grams. So, uh, rotate the counterweight anti-clockwise to three. Okay. Because the turntable spins, it generates an inward force that's applied to the needle that pulls the needle towards the center. Because of that, the needle doesn't sit properly in the center of the groove. The anti-skating is there to counteract this. As a rule of thumb, you set the anti-skating to the same value as the counterweight. So I'll set it to three here. One good way to test that the anti-skating is working is to take a blank record with no grooves on it get the turntable spinning and put the needle on to the blank record. If the anti-skating is set correctly, the needle should stay in that position. And it also should stay if you speed the record up manually. If the needle is moving inward, add more anti-skating. If it's moving outward, add less. Now the turntable is set up correctly. The last thing to do is check that you're getting signal. So stick a record on, start it up, drop the needle on, check that you're getting signal. If you are, great. And then slowly bring it up. Should we just listen to the whole record? Should we just listen to it? Oh, just... The last step is to use the same record on both decks, set the gains the same, and just make sure that both decks are producing the same level. Um, yeah, and then you're good to go.